reset in your mind. Um, we're always committed to moving forward, sometimes prematurely. In order to reset your mind to think abundantly or to live abundantly, you first have to identify where you're currently thinking in scarcity, which we don't like to spend any time there because it's not fun. So, and, and you can't, to me, one of the number one ways to avoid, to in a sexy way, avoid transformation is to generalize too much. Like, oh, my life. Oh, your life is so big. What areas of your life are you currently thinking in scarcity? Oh, in my relationships, what part of your relationship? There's four different types of relationships. There's romantic, there's family, there's colleague, and there's community. In what areas? My finances, what kind of finances? Your income or your outflow? Your debt management or your wealth building? So number one, the number one way you push past the limiting belief system is that you identify where it's limited. And you, it's almost like going to the doctor saying, doc, my left arm really hurts. He's not just gonna start working on the arm, he's gonna say, where? Well, you know, the upper part. Well, where in the upper part? Well, over here between the elbow and the shoulder. Well, where between the, like, doctors will ask you so many detailed questions so that they can go exactly to where the pain point is and relieve the pain. Treat your mindset that way as well. So when you're reaching for a more abundant way of thinking, start by saying, what frame of thinking, what mindset, what part of my mindset, what belief system must I evict to create space? Let me give you another example. Your hand. Your hand can only hold on to so much. Right? So if your hand is already full of limiting thoughts, I'm not good enough, uh, I'll never have wealth, money is difficult to create, I'm always gonna be overweight, people can't be trusted. If your hand is already full with limiting beliefs, how can you dare hold on to an abundant way of thinking? So first, let's dismantle this truth. Let's dismantle the truth that money is hard to make. So in the past, I've made money hard to make. Money is abundant. There's enough for all of us. Money is simply a tool. Money is just dirty paper. It's a team member. Money is not the end all. Money gives you access to better memories. Okay, great, let's work on that. And now let's work on I'll always be broke or whatever the mindset is, right? And the reality is, no, if you wanna have more money coming in or you, you wanna have more money in your bank account, then keep more than you spend. So how can we do that? So you have to be willing to be mildly to moderately to significantly inconvenience possibly in order to keep more than you spend possibly or you want to grow your top line and get more revenue you want to create you might lose a little sleep you might not be able to go out to as many parties you might not be able to spend as much on your clothes but you want to bring in more than you spend so financial struggle is not imminent now I'm not saying it's not difficult at times I've been there but it's not imminent, it's not your destiny. So notice how I can go and I can dismantle each belief system, even if you don't believe this new truth yet, which I've given you plenty of exercises around adopting a new mindset. You can't visit a new mindset. You gotta go to a new mindset, you gotta park, and you gotta constantly revisit that mindset called possibility. So when you talk about how do I shift my mindset to abundant thinking, first, evict the negative thinking. Now that's not an overnight thing. Like download, it's evicted. Mm -mm. There's no sprinkle fairy dust in this journey. There's no magic potion, there's no magic wand. This is a, a ongoing, it's like a muscle. It's like your abs, it's like your triceps and your biceps. I've talked about that before. You gotta build that muscle, but you first have to identify what muscle do I wanna build? I wanna build the belief system around financial abundance in my life. Go that laser. I wanna build the belief system around love, a healthy love relationship for me. Okay, then go there. Energy grows where energy goes, right? So what do you need to know and learn? Whenever I want to take on a new belief system, first I spend time identifying my current limiting belief system in that area. It's ugly, it's uncomfortable, I unpack it. Then the second thing you do is identify the results that that limiting belief system has brought into your life. Now that really isn't fun. It's funky, it feels like you're sludging through the mud, you start feeling like an idiot, you feel like a nut, you're like, who am I, I'm brilliant in this area, how can I still be thinking this? Because you're normal, you're human, and humans are full of imperfections, oh, and we're managing our dysfunction. That's just, that's just who we are. There's no perfect human, right? So what does it create in your life? What does it cost you? Because I think when you become really clear of the cost, 
then you become really clear that you don't want to pay that cost again. I think we continue to go in the same circle and end up in the same place, different day, different year, different relationship, you know, different bank account, because we haven't identified what has this behavior, what has this mindset cost me. But when you stop for a moment and go, mm, here's my limiting belief system, and here's what it's cost me. Okay, I'm done with that. Now we can go to an abundant mindset. I think people try to run past those first two way too fast and hold on to an abundant mindset and it doesn't last because they haven't become clear of the toxic limiting mindset and its cost. So they slingshot back to that place that they had started before and end up asking the question, how did I end up here again? Right? We've all said that. I've asked that question a little over a hundred times, right? And so I think those are the first two steps. And then the third thing is to surround yourself in a tribe of people that inspire you to stand on your tippy toes by, the, by who they are being. And in order for you to stay in their proximity, you need to innately grow who you are in order for you. Now they don't use it as a doorway or pathway or rites of passage, but in order for you to feel comfortable in their presence, you gotta tippy toe naturally. They even make you nervous when you're around them. I, I have that, I have a circle of friends who I go, <sighs> And I've had that circle of friends for, I don't know, 15, 16 years. And I keep going around them and I always feel nauseous and they always make me feel like I want a tippy toe. And, and they've, they've helped to make me a better woman. They didn't design it. They didn't craft it. They didn't tell me what to do. Just being in their presence. And oh, by the way, I paid to be in their presence. I consistently pay to be in their presence. I don't have any formal business with them. Just being their friends make me nervous because they play so big in the world, they serve so big in the world, they give so big in the world, they, 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 at a cellular level, they are transformation, like they're the real deal. And so I wanna stay in their presence, so I maintain my level of work. And so those are the three things that you do to go from a limiting belief system, mindset, to a mindset of abundance. That's the beginning, there are a lot of things in between, but those are the big anchors that I recommend. reset in your mind. Um, we're always committed to moving forward, sometimes prematurely. In order to reset your mind to think abundantly or to live abundantly, you first have to identify where are you currently thinking in scarcity, which we don't like to spend any time there because it's not fun. So, and, and you can't, to me, one of the number one ways to avoid, to in a sexy way, avoid transformation is to generalize too much. Like, oh my life, well, your life is so big. What areas of your life are you currently thinking in scarcity? Oh, in my relationships, what part of your relationship? There's four different types of relationships. There's romantic, there's family, there's colleague, and there's community. In what areas? My finances, what kind of finances? Your income or your outflow? Your debt management or your wealth building? So number one, the number one you push past the limiting belief system is that you identify where it's limited. And you, it's